How did that feel? Ooh. That was fun. I got, I got nothing to say. I got nothing to say. The New York Knicks are everything that you have craved for. The way they play, the way their pieces fit. This is the best Knicks team that we have seen in, in 20 years. It's Brunson. It comes down to Brunson. The guy is going to show up. You can't really figure out a way to game plan to limit him. He's too good with the ball. He's too strong. He's too smart. So I just started thinking about it, man. I'm going up and down these teams and I'm going, why wouldn't the Knicks be in this category with these top tier teams when they've got a guy like Jalen Brunson, who I believe in just about as much as anybody in the Eastern Conference. On July 12, 2022, the New York Knicks would reach a four-year, $104 million agreement with free agent point guard Jalen Brunson. And how did NBA Twitter react? Per usual, when it comes to the New York Knicks, clowning the sign. And although there was a fair point to wonder how good Jalen Brunson could truly be, he hadn't proven tons when he signed that contract outside of helping Dallas beat the Utah Jazz in the 2022 playoffs without Luka Doncic. In his first season with New York, he proved everybody wrong leading the Knicks to the five seed in the Eastern Conference playoffs defeating the Cavaliers in the first round giving New York its first playoff series win since 2013 when Carmelo Anthony helped lead the Knicks to a 4-2 series win over the Boston Celtics Brunson and company would fight hard against the eventual Eastern Conference champions in the Miami Heat and would eventually lose in six games however there was plenty to be hopeful about it was a good season for the Knicks and the the vibes were really high coming into 2023. But instead of picking back up right where they left off, the Knicks would struggle to start the season. Guys like Julius Randle had awful Novembers, and in December, the Knicks would go 5-7, and seven, putting them at 17-15 and 15 on the season. To make matters worse, Mitchell Robinson got hurt early in December, was going to be out a significant amount of time, and the Knicks found themselves smack dab in the middle of a play-in tournament as the 8th seed in the East. On December December 30th, 2023, the news would break that the Knicks were trading RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly to the Toronto Raptors for OG Ananobi and Precious Achua. At first, everyone thought this is a good trade for both teams. And while I still think that, I don't think anybody could have measured the type of impact OG would have on this New York Knicks team over the next month. Fast forward to today, February 3rd, 2024. The Knicks are 32 and 17 and sitting at third in the Eastern Conference. Yes, you just did the math correctly. That is a 15 and two record in 2024 post the OG and Anobi trade. Not only is it the best record in the NBA during that span, but the Knicks also have the seventh ranked offensive efficiency in that span, the number one defense by a large margin and the number one net rating at plus 15.1. If we compare that to before the trade, the Knicks had the eighth rated offensive efficiency the 18th ranked defense they are currently on a nine game winning streak and one of their two losses in 2024 occurred without Jalen Brunson playing in the game the vibes have truly never been higher in a long time for the New York Knicks fan base I'm gonna let our friend Sean take it away on what this 15 and 2 stretch has meant to Knicks fans I'm Sean Gettys aka I hate Sean very big Knicks fan. Right now is a great time to be one. I mean, it's been quite an experience. Shout out to Tom Thibodeau. Shout out to Leon Rose. Shout out to our MVP, Jalen Brunson. Like this has been a really magical season. It's really special as a Knicks fan. We're on a nine game win streak right now as I speak. We play the Lakers uh, tonight. We've gotten nine game win streaks multiple times before. We haven't cracked 10. And so we want that 10 game win streak. I'm really proud of this team. I'm really excited about where this team can go. This season has been a dream but like it's not really been a dream because it's like it feels it feels real this is what we do this is who we are we're a good team we're one of the best teams in the league actually i'm really excited i love this season i love this team and i'm so excited about where we can go going forward i really think truly i speak for a lot of Nick fans and maybe not as many yet maybe not everybody's caught on yet but i think what we're seeing is the beginning of a dynasty truly has the potential to be you can never guarantee a dynasty but i think we're very good right now and i think we're going to be very good for a very long time so what exactly has changed for the Knicks in 2024 outside of the obvious, the addition of OG? Let's dive into this roster and really try to figure out 
how this team is different. Let's start with the ascending superstar himself, Jalen Brunson. In the calendar year of 2024, Jalen Brunson is averaging 29.7 points per game and 7.3 assists. He also has the second best net rating with plus 23.9, only behind his teammate OG Ananobi. But I think what's been most impressive during this entire stretch for Jalen Brunson is the past three games the Knicks have played in. These past three games, Julius Randle has been out with a shoulder injury and OG's been out with a nagging elbow. After beating the Hornets without either of those guys, they would play the Jazz on the second night of a back-to-back -back at home and defeat them as well, Jalen Brunson having 32 and nine assists. And then just two nights later, they defeat the Indiana Pacers in a gritty win that Jalen dropped 40 in. It was also the same day he was announced as an all-star for the first time in his career. I'll let Sean tell you just what Jalen Brunson means to this New York fan base. Jalen Brunson makes being a Knicks fan so fun. He makes being a basketball fan so fun. Like a nightly basis almost, there's a lot of times I'm just like, yo, Jalen Brunson plays for my team. He plays for my basketball team. He can just get wherever he wants on the court. He's at 6'1 and can post up bigs. Like he had an ISO against the Nets on the elbow and went to a jump hook. And I'm just like, yo, why are you able to do this? You know, and then at the same time, his handle is ridiculous and he's, his footwork is like probably the best in the league. It, it doesn't even make any sense how good at basketball Jalen Brunson is. And then of course we have a guy like Julius Randle who did just get hurt like I mentioned earlier a couple games ago. The hope is he's only out a month or so. So the Knicks are going to have to continue to show this grit and this toughness that they have since trading for OG. But after starting off with a really rough November Julius Randle rebounded nicely in December and January, averaging 26.2 points per game on 51.2% from the field. I'll talk about their playoff hopes later, but it is going to be key that they get Julius Randle healthy again and that he comes up for them in the playoffs on the offensive end. It's obvious to see that OG Ananobi has changed this team just from a record perspective, but let's break down some more advanced statistics into what exactly he has meant for this team. To start off, he is the perfect player for a coach like Tom Thibodeau. Tibbs is a guy who is known for riding his guys, playing them as much as possible, wanting to get the most out of them, and pretty much just doing whatever he asks of you. OG is a perfect example of that type of player. He can guard almost any position, and his defensive EPM, according to dunksandthrees.com, is off the charts within the 97th percentile in the entire league. But it's not just defense that OG obviously brings to this team. He's also shooting 47.5% from the corner three-point spot, which makes up for 62.5% of his threes, providing much more space for Jalen Brunson to work and providing necessary spacing for this Knicks offense. In comparison, I do like RJ Barrett, but he only shot 38.8% from the corner and only took 37.7% of his threes from there. Obviously, a lot of that is due to the style of play. RJ Barrett is not the same style of offensive player as OG but that's why this trade made so much sense for the Knicks. They didn't need another guy with the ball in his hands. They needed a guy who could play off the ball on offense and provide that spacing. OG's net rating since joining the Knicks is number one in the NBA at plus 24.6, like I mentioned earlier, and his on off numbers are pretty incredible as well at plus 24. Some of that obviously can be noisy due to the Knicks not having as deep of a team as they did pre-trade, but I still think it's significant nonetheless. The next guy I'd love to talk about about is Isaiah Hartenstein. Hartenstein has quite easily been, according to dunksandthrees.com, the best defender in the NBA this year. Now, obviously, defensive analytics can be messy. They're not perfect, but it's still significant. He currently has the best defensive EPM in the league by a pretty large margin at plus 4.4. I don't think anybody expected this out of Hartenstein when Mitchell Robinson went down in early December for a significant amount of time, but he's really stepped up in helping anchor this elite Knicks defense. The Knicks as a team have the best offensive rebound percentage in the league. These guys crash really hard and Hartenstein is a huge reason for that. He actually has one of the best offensive rebound percentages individually in the league as well at 15.1%, which makes me even more excited for Mitchell Robinson's hopeful return towards the tail end of the season. You also have a guy like Dante DiVincenzo who has really stepped up in the absence of Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett on the offensive end. He's been a guy who has slotted into the starting lineup ever since and can just get hot on any given night. His efficiencies went down a little bit, but he's averaging 15.9 points per game post-trade 
grade and shooting 38.5% from three. With Julius Randle and OG out the past three games, he scored 28 points, 33 points, and 20 points. He's just one of those guys you love to have for the playoffs. He could win you a game by getting hot on a night. I don't have tons to say about Josh Hart just because he's a guy that does all the right things. He's not gonna fill a stat sheet necessarily, but he is one of those guys that Tibbs loves. You need those guys in the playoffs. When it comes to a guy like Quentin Grimes, I don't have much to say about him. I think he's been good as a role player, but I wonder if he's one of the guys that gets moved in a trade within the next couple days. And two last guys on this roster that heavily intrigue me are Miles McBride and Precious Chua. Post OG trade, Miles McBride is averaging 16.4 minutes per game, which is a little over 11 more minutes per game than previously. He's averaging 8.7 points per game, and he's shooting 46.5% from three on four and a half attempts per game. I think Miles McBride has a chance as he continues getting more and more run with these lineups to improve tremendously by the time the playoffs come around. And then of course, Precious is someone that I think a lot of NBA Twitter has always been in love with, maybe more for the potential that he has than anything else. But he's also had a couple recent good games and I'm interested to see how the Knicks continue to develop him. He also is one of those guys that Tibbs just seems to love. But bottom line with the New York Knicks, I think there's something to be said about this recent trend of teams with a certain identity and continuity in today's NBA. I feel like we went through an era in the NBA where it was a majority of star chasing over the past decade outside of the Warriors pre-Kevin Durant, where everyone really just wanted to get as many stars together as possible. But if you take a look at the Nuggets run last year, obviously they have an all-time great in Jokic, but the rest of that roster was a team with years of continuity. And if you take a look at the Heat last year, you take a look at the Thunder this year, year, even the Wolves this year. These are teams with culture and buy-in. You can tell they trust their coaches. There's respect and there's unselfishness there. Everyone just wants to do whatever it takes to win. And now you take a look at the New York Knicks. This is a team that now has a true identity. And to me, it's the type of team that Tom Thibodeau has always dreamed of. OG Ananobi was asked about playing 44 minutes a couple weeks ago after a game, which honestly is pretty standard for Tom Thibodeau playing some of his best players, but it's not necessarily something every player enjoys. OG's answer to that question? This is a team that I believe didn't have too much of an identity last season, even though they were able to make some noise in the playoffs and defeat the Cavaliers. And even coming into the season, it didn't seem to have a strong, strong identity, but now they do. They are a defensive first team, a tough team, a gritty team, a team that's going to out execute you and grind you down. But yet they've also shown they have an elite ability to score. And that's what I appreciate about this Knicks roster. You have guys like Josh Hart and Jalen Brunson who have been good friends forever and played at Villanova together, not to mention other Nova guys like DiVincenzo and Archie Diacono on the bench. You have OG, who is a coach's dream. To put it plainly, Leon Rose, the Knicks general manager, has done a phenomenal job over the past couple seasons constructing this team. And when it comes to trade rumors and the trade deadline approaching, I don't think the Knicks need to make a massive move to be considered a serious threat in the East this year. They've already shown they can win a playoff series. Mitchell Robinson is probably coming back. They have OG now. They have DiVincenzo now. And Hartenstein has literally been the best defender in the NBA. Some of the rumors for trade targets have been guys like DeJounte Murray, Malcolm Brogdon, Bruce Brown, and even some wild ones on Jimmy Butler and LeBron James. But I feel like if I'm Leon Rose, I'm treading very carefully carefully with this deadline approaching. I don't know. I'm just a firm believer in team continuity. You've already made one massive trade that has been a home run for you. Don't get too greedy. Could a Brogdon or a Bruce Brown deal probably make sense? Yes, they seem to be good fits from a play style perspective and even a culture perspective. But for the most part, I think you ride with your guys. Wait for Mitchell Robinson to come back. You have plenty of depth for the playoffs. You don't need to go 10 deep in the playoffs. Plus, like I said earlier, I think guys like Deuce McBride and Precious Achua are going to be completely different players by the end of the year. The biggest X factor as to how far the New York Knicks will go is in my opinion, pretty easily Julius Randle. Brunson is gonna do his thing. The defense is going to do their thing. Julius has made the playoffs twice in his career in 2021 with the Knicks and last season. And in both playoffs, he has performed pretty awfully and seen a massive decline from his regular season stats to the playoffs, including shooting 29% from the field in 2021 and 37% from the field just last season on only 16.6 points per game. The New York Knicks need Julius Randle on the offensive end in the playoffs. But either way, as a Knicks fan, this has to be the most excited you've been since Allen Houston and aging Patrick Ewing were leading the eight-seeded Knicks to an unbelievable finals 
run in 1999. Enjoy this NYC. Who knows how long it will last? There's nothing better in sports than when your team is unexpectedly awesome. And that has been the Knicks in the new year of 2024. Enjoy it. Marinate in it. Get your hopes up. They probably will let you down. All of our teams do. But that is what sports are all about. Also, shout out Sean for hopping on this video, giving his takes and his opinions as a huge Knicks fan. Don't forget to follow him on X. The link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, check out the video I recently made on the Utah Jazz rebuild somehow just beginning. The Jazz are smack dab in the middle of playoff contention, and nobody really expected it heading into the season. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you on the hardwood.